Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. Today I'm going to be decorating this tray that I got from Hobby Lobby for my birthday and I'm doing three DIYs for this. So Zach got me this jug because he thought maybe I could do something with it and you could get something similar like a wine jug or something or I'm sure they have them at your local craft store too but I wanted to make this look really old and I wanted to put a label on it so I just have my ivory chalk paint um, from Walmart. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint and I'm just using a sponge brush for this. I didn't know if it would help with like the streaks but I did go ahead and do two coats just because it was really see-through and on the second coat you will want to do a really thick coat otherwise you're going to almost be washing off your first coat with the second coat of paint. <laughs> Make sure like usual to stay tuned till the end of the video to see a few pictures of the kids. Bree turned 9 months old this past week and Koi turned 12. I also have these little yogurt jars that Zach's mom saves for me. They're so cute and I decided I wanted to put a succulent in this one for my tray so I did go ahead and paint it with the same paint and I did need to do two coats on this one too. So I have this little shadow box type thing that I got from Dollar Tree. It's made from chipboard and it's really cute and the frame is pretty distressed too. But I just went ahead and ripped off that middle piece and the piece that it was glued to was not coming off very well so I just decided to leave it in there. And I went ahead and put some painter's tape around the edges of my frame because I wanted to keep that as is and I just don't want to get any paint on it. If you're really... Um, precise and like good <laughs> then you probably don't need the tape but I'm not I'm not so I just went ahead and used that so that I wouldn't get any paint on the edges next I'm using some Waverly chalk paint from Walmart in the color plaid and I'm just covering the entire bottom and then I'm also covering the middle piece that I took out of there and I only needed one coat of paint for this. When that was dry, I took a stencil from Walmart and I'm just writing the word yum on here. This is going to be a tray in my kitchen, so I thought it was appropriate. Um, I didn't really love how the letters turned out because I don't know, I, I think I just didn't really love the font that I chose, but um, I'll probably go ahead and connect the letters too and that might help. I just didn't feel like I could read it very well, but I honestly didn't have a lot of time when I was making this, so I just, um, I'll probably do that later. But I'm just using my paint pen and outlining the letters and then I filled those in like three times to get them um, really, you know, not looking spotty, I guess. I still think it turned out cute. I'll probably just fix the letters later a little better. So back to our jars. I lost some footage of me distressing these, but I just wet distressed them. I think it looks um, way better and just more natural. So I went ahead and took a paper towel and I just got that wet and then I just rubbed off the spots that I wanted to look distressed. And then for the little jar here, I'm adding some jute twine. You can get this at Dollar Tree or Walmart. I like to get the one from Walmart because it comes with a lot more so I feel like it's cheaper. Um, and then I'm just hot gluing that around the top. Just a few strands around and I think it looks really cute. So I thought the ivory chalk paint looked too clean to be naturally that distressed. So I'm going to go in with some more gray chalk paint and I'm just dry brushing that onto the jar. You'll just want to remove as much paint as possible from your brush on a paper towel or something. Um, and that way you don't get too much on your jar. But if you do, no worries. Just go back over it with some more of the ivory chalk paint or whatever colors you're using. 
and it'll turn out just fine. But I think this thing turned out really cute. It's probably one of my favorites. Now for this jar, I'm taking a succulent that I got from Dollar Tree and I just pulled it right out of there. It's really easy. And then um, I have some old reindeer moss that I had way back from Christmas time and I'm just using that as filler. And then my succulent um, stem was a little bit too long so I just cut off the end of it with my scissors. It was really easy and then it fit right down in there. So, so cute. I just love, love, love how this turned out. So I just used the same technique on my bigger jar um, to distress it. I'm using that gray chalk paint. I feel like I got a little bit too much on it at first. Um, so make sure you really, really, you know, wipe off your brush as much as you can so that you don't get um, too much. But like I said, it's okay if you do. Just go back over it with a little more white. I really liked how it ended up turning out in the end. I was a little <laughs> upset with myself for going from side to side instead of up and down with the distressing because that's how... Um, the rest of my paint was going up and down, but I went back over it several times until I just had it the way that I thought it looked really cute and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So next I cut a square from an old pillowcase that was Koi's that he didn't want anymore. I really like the material, it's almost kind of like canvas, um, but not exactly, but it was really easy to make it fray, so I really liked that. But you can just use any fabric that you have on hand. And, and like I said, I just cut a square and then I am pulling on the edges and pulling little pieces out to make sure it looks really old and frayed. And then I'm taking some Distress Ink from Hobby Lobby. I've had this for forever, like years and years, because this is mainly all I use it for. Um, but I really love the look that it gives to material. It makes it look old. Um, so I just go ahead and rub that all over the fabric and it gives it an old distressed look. Really vintage, a little bit shabby chic, and farmhouse. All my favorites kind of mixed into one. So I'm writing number four on here. I really like the numbers that people are doing lately. And I pick four because we have four people in our family. So I think I'm going to do a few pieces that I can kind of decorate with fours around the house. I think it'll be really cute. So I do have my stencil from Walmart and I'm just using that for the N because I'm not really great at freehanding. But I did go ahead and freehand the O because I don't have a stencil. Um, for a smaller O. So I made the O and then I underlined it. And then I also just used my phone to look up a Google image of a four. <laughs> and I just kind of copied it and I really like how it turned out. I started out with my paint pen, um, but it wasn't really working very well in the fabric. So I did go ahead and switch to a Sharpie and it worked out a lot better. So I didn't want to cover this whole jar in Mod Podge, but I am using a little bit on the back of the fabric so that it'll lay flat on the jar. I didn't want to use hot glue because a lot of times when you use that with fabric, it just adds bulk and then it's bumpy. Um, but I'm just using a little bit of fabric so that, or a little bit of the Mod Podge on the fabric so that it doesn't leak all the way through and make it look hard on the outside. And it really didn't. I didn't even notice, like you couldn't tell that I used Mod Podge on it at all which I really, really liked. So 
So I know I've been kind of jumping around between DIYs for this video, but I kind of wanted you guys to see the whole process. You know, I let things dry while I'm working on another thing. But once this one was done, you can see what I mean by like the letters were not connected. So I might fix those later. Um, but I just went ahead and removed that tape once everything was dry and I hot glued the middle piece back onto the sign. I think it still came out cute, but I think I'll kind of, you know, work on the letters a little bit more till it looks exactly the way I want it to. So it took me a few minutes to arrange everything on the tray the way I wanted it. I kind of wanted to have, to still be able to see the pig in the middle because if you saw um, my haul with this tray, you know I love pigs. My great grandpa was a pig farmer so I have a lot of pigs. Um, like this little one um, that I just put on the tray, that was my great grandpa's. Um, so I have a lot of pigs that got passed down to me. I just think they're so cute. But anyway, I went ahead and just arranged everything on the tray and I moved everything around a lot until it looked exactly how I wanted it. But this tray is so big and I feel like I could um, add a whole lot to this if I wanted to add more. But that little white vase I got from Goodwill a long time ago and this is some just a lavender pick from Walmart for 97 cents. They're so pretty. Um, if you can find them at yours, it took me a while to find them, but when I did, I grabbed a whole bunch of them, but I think it just turned out so pretty. And then I did put some flowers in the other vases from Hobby Lobby, but of course you can use Dollar Tree or Walmart flowers are cheaper, but I think they look a little more real, so I like those better. And then the bottle with the twine covering it, that was just a Coke bottle that I covered a long time ago with twine. Um, but those come out really pretty with the twine, the little Coke bottles. But like I said, Brie turned nine months old. So here are a few pictures of her. Koi turned 12 yesterday. Um, so just exciting times around here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more DIYs like this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.